Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Elementary. A great episode. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. First and foremost, we're literally picking up where last week's episode left off with Moreland's death at the hand of... Um, Odin. It's actually kind of interesting seeing that little recap at the beginning. I was thinking one of those people there was his guard, but you see the guy kind of walk up with him with a gun in hand, so it's like, I guess that was one of the mercenaries that ended up killing him. But obviously, like, this is a hard episode. Like, you don't really normally see Sherlock like this. I mean, obviously, like, a lot of cases don't hit him as personally as this does, but it's also because Sherlock blames himself because it's like, I brought my dad into this situation. He's dead. Not only him, the people that work for him and even Annie. So there's like a lot of bodies that he feels like, yes, Odin was responsible, but he kind of takes it upon himself to be like, I'm the one that kind of went after this Goliath and well, well, yeah. And it ended up backfiring and so many people, even his own dad, because the whole thing is, and it's something I brought up before. It's like he had a very, very complicated relationship with his dad. And for him, it's like, you know, at the very least, if my dad's dead, you know, it's like, you know, at the very least, it helps because I didn't like my dad. The fact is he abandoned my mom when she was dealing with addiction. Me and my brother, we were just a distraction to him. But for him, it's like, in his mind, his dad was this titan. It's like, you know, and every kid, you know, every son's going to think their father is unstoppable. But in his mind, it's like, I really thought my dad, he didn't, you know, he's like, my dad had countless enemies. And no matter who came after him, he always stood above them. So to think that after all this, his dad actually got toppled, it, it, it just, it doesn't seem real, you know? It seems impossible, you, you know, he, oh, you know. He might have said in the past, like, oh, like someone's, you know, Bobby, I don't, I think somewhere in his mind, he never did think that anyone would ever, get, you know, his dad would kind of, you know, go out still being on top, you know, you know, so it's so hard to live with. Then there's a whole situation where they get to the crime scene and, you know, Bella's like, let me and Watson go. You don't have to see the it's like Sherlock's like, no, I got to do this. But as he gets closer, he realizes like the vehicle's been tampered with. It's like telling Bell to get CSU as far away from the scene and trying to explain. But before finishing explaining, the car goes off. Luckily, no one was nearby, so the whole plan was to get Sherlock and Watson close, so that because obviously they're the main targets to get them wiped out. So, like I said, this is the episode where like a lot of the big guns comes out because like Gregson now knowing everything, he confronts Odin himself. It's like, yo, I'm I'm you were coming after you. The fact of the matter is, you know, you need to stop killing people. The fact of the matter is. We got our eyes on you, so there's no, like, hiding in the shadows anymore from what you do. We know, and we're going to keep looking. But Odin's basically saying, like, I forgot what, what he said exactly, but there was, like, a certain math that he was like, oh, I took this. And he's like, in that math, they teach you that there's no solution. There's some things that don't have a so solution. But for him, it's like, these problems, it's like, that's what his mentality is with this whole thing. It's trying to trying to create solutions to things that potentially don't have solutions. And he's kind of, you know, making that clear. And he's so cocky, you know. Sadly, though, the guy's responsible for killing Moreland. Uh, it was this dude named Jacob and his team. But sadly, like, they were already dealt with. Because it turns out, like, whoever was with them ended up killing them, dismembering them, which is pretty brutal, and then burning their bodies. Which even Eugene was kind of like, well, whatever happened to them, they didn't, they got off too easy, essentially, after what they've done. You know, so... What's even messed up, too, is that they ended up stealing a watch off of Moreland's body, basically, because it's a very expensive watch, and it's like, oh, why let something that expensive go to waste so they replace it with a fake watch? Because after the explosion, Sherlock looked at the watch and could tell that it wasn't his dad's normal watch, so... It turns out, like, Jacob had given it to, like, his brother-in-law, Kent, I guess, to try and sell, so... Uh, they end up talking to this guy named Wentz because it was them trying to find out who this potential fourth man could have been a part of this uh, mercenary squad because they worked for this particular, like, company. And maybe, like, this fourth person was from that. The person they talked to is this new name, Wentz, which that actor has been in quite a few things. I think, like, I'm pretty sure he, he was in 24, if I remember correctly. Wasn't he, like, a senator or something in 20? Like, that actor, he's popped up in a lot of stuff. Interestingly enough, he played Leland in season one of Daredevil, which is interesting because, like, Lucy Liu directed an episode. I, 
I believe she, I think it was just the pilot, but she directed, uh, yeah, the pilot, the, not the pilot, the, uh, first episode of season two of Luke Cage. Just, you know, just putting stuff together in my head like that, I just thought it was kind of interesting. I'm pretty sure I've made reference to other people who've popped up in, like, Netflix Marvel stuff that actually have popped up in this too, I believe. I'm just, I can't think of any off the top of my head. I just know Luke's Luke because of that whole Luke Cage connection. That's the only reason why. But nevertheless, that's me going on a huge tangent. I was actually kind of surprised when it turns out he was actually the one that did that. Like, I wonder, did he do all that himself? Like, the dismembering? I mean, they, he, they said there was only, like, a fourth guy. There was no one else there. So it's like, he did all, all that himself. The only reason why they were able to find out because he was getting, like, his chemo treatment for his pancreatic cancer. And the nurse was about to lift up his other arm. And in that moment, Sherlock saw the burn on his arm. So it's like, okay. But he's not willing to talk now because he's one of those people that I guess got... Because the whole thing is they're going after these mercenaries because, hey, mercenaries are most likely someone they could they could turn on Odin because unlike everyone else who is like, oh, these are people who believe in what he does, the mercenaries are all doing this for profit. Well, sadly for them, Wentz is someone who believes who brought in, you know, people that, you know, Odin could use. I mean, at the very least, we know he was respons- they were responsible for Moreland, Annie, and obviously Moreland's team might have even been... Um, responsible for like Wesley's family you know that whole situation making it look like double murder suicide type of situation you know so it was interesting too because you know Sherlock went to McNally uh even be waiting in his car but he was there picking up his daughter he's like really that my my daughter is here and he's like oh wait family's off limits now Sherlock says and it's like he's like I would never hurt her but the fact of the matter is I can't say the same thing for your employee employer and then you know you have McNally being like what went down I had no idea I literally only learned about it now and the fact of the matter is if I was there I would have told Odin not to do that because this whole thing spiraled out of control yes at first this is about preventing terrible things but now it's about stopping the people trying to stop you from doing terrible things I mean you're stopping you from stopping people who are doing terrible things is what I'm trying to say. But it's like it's it's so far from what Odin initially wanted to do. And that was like to save lives by kind of, you know, cutting off, you know, the head of the serpent like immediately. Not really the right phrase to use, but stop the bad guys ahead of time. But now it's like there's collateral damage in all this to stop himself from not being caught up in all of this. He's killing other people that are trying to stop him. And even to the point, it's like Sherlock's like, you can do the right thing in this situation. You can either work with us or you can go down with them. But you see McNally because he's one of those people who does believe in this. He even brings it up to Odin being like, yeah, Sherlock made a vi- brought, you know, had a visit, which is like Odin, I think, is so cocky that he just doesn't think anything's to be worried about it's like oh you want to have this meeting and stuff like that but you have McNally be at the very least with everything going down you might want to cover you know where at least get a damn hat or something to kind of hide yourself because even with a good quick search or whatever I can find out where you were and everything so what was really interesting and it seems like the main reason why Odin kind of went to McNally was also because of his access to the NSA but basically Odin's continuously trying to expand his reach basically making it so because initially like we know everything last episode one of the people you know um Annie had killed was about owning her like that woman's brother's company and it would help him do all that stuff with videos and stuff like attract people now obviously he's obviously he's doing the same thing with the NSA it's like obviously he can only search what's on his you know media stuff so for him he wants access to all other like emails and media stuff that the NSA has access to which I'm curious how would McNally spin that to people I guess maybe it's just like oh I I don't know maybe how because he would have to get it from top ranking people but I guess if you can convince top ranking people much like himself to go along with what Odin has planned especially if it means stopping you know future tragedies then I guess it kind of makes sense but it's still that thing of like I don't know how he's supposed to spin that, you know, because even Odin was like, well, do whatever you got to do, be convincing or whatever. But it's like, I don't, like I said, unless they're like minded, I don't think it's going to be that easy to kind of sway an entire organization. But to be fair, you don't have to sway an entire organization. You just have to sway the right people to kind of see things your way. But obviously, I got a little off track. But the fact of the matter is, because Wits uh, won't testify, no one's really taking the case. Because obviously, we know that Gregson was reaching out to certain DA people 
that would take this case, but people are back, the DA in particular, the guy, it's backing down because obviously because of the lawyers that went, Scott, he's not saying anything, luckily for Odin. And the fact of the matter is, it's just, it's caught, they don't have a smoking gun. They don't have the proper ammo, as he was kind of saying, for this particular case. It's like, we know he's murdering people, but they just don't have an, anything enough. Because where things stand now, no one's going to want to touch this case just because it's just going to be a nightmare to kind of deal with. So no one's trying to tackle that, you know? So, and now it's like Sherlock is like, it's over. Like, the fact of the matter is I should have dealt with Odin basically sooner without letting him know we were coming, but I messed up. This was our one opportunity. Because of this, like, he's going to have his guard up, and we're never going to... He's, he's always going to see us coming from now on, you know? Because McNally, McNally had made a point that, like, literally a long list of government agencies were looking at him. Now, like, obviously the NYPD was already gunning for him, but, like, the list of people taking an interest in him now and everything he's associated with, like, that list was starting to grow. But it, at this point, they've got nothing. You know, Odin, you know, has garnished this level of loyalty from people, but also, you know, he has the money and the systems to kind of back himself up to kind of make it so that no one can come after him. So pretty hard to take this dude down you know and so Sherlock brings something to Watson being like basically we're going to have to um plan a murder of our own because you know Watson wants to talk to Sherlock because it's like it's just like they're at a dead end they have to start over and but this is a moment where Sherlock you almost see him almost give up to a certain extent because it's like you know Watson's like the fact of the matter is we'll find something we always do in these type of situations but Sherlock feels like no we kind of have to plan things of our own so next thing we see you know it's interesting too that scene between him and karen odin and karen was the fact is that karen had stopped a lot of their operations which it was like no don't do that because the fact of the matter is like you know the nypd they don't have anything on us once isn't going to talk so we shouldn't stop our responsibilities and just the fact is he refers to it as responsibilities it's just ugh you know, so they're still going through with a lot of stuff they've kept an eye on and stuff like that. Odin's meeting with McNallan turns out to be Sherlock. And I wasn't surprised by that, but Sherlock is there with a gun, which, you know, Odin trying to be like, oh, you wouldn't use a gun or whatever, because obviously we're kindred spirits. You you don't believe in guns, which Sherlock is like, yeah, I don't, because they allow us to kind of give into our base, you know, emotions. Like when we're mad, like it's so easy to take a gun, you know, sadly, and just kill somebody. But for him, it's like there are some solutions that only have a violent there's certain situations that only have a violent solution to them. You know, Odin's trying to, you know, once again, plead his case about everything of like, I understand how it's like, it's so interesting that you're up there trying to plead your case being like, I understand why you're mad. It's like, yeah, you murdered his father. Of course, he's going to be mad. Once again, he pointed out too. It's like, he's literally the last of the home's line. His brother's gone. His dad's now gone. It's like, he's the last of his family. So of course, you know, it's, it's just so interesting because it's still that whole conversation. Once again, it's like you understand where Odin comes from with this whole situation. If you had the opportunity to strike before something terrible happened, of course. But the fact of the matter is it, it turns into that whole conversation of free will, which I, I don't know. It's kind of interesting when you break that down because, like, yes, you realize that Sherlock's going to think about things the right way. Yes, you would want things to kind of be the way Odin does. But as we can see, like... You can have the best of intentions and yet things can spiral so much. All these different people getting murdered because like the fact of the matter is they said this and that. Does that mean they would act upon it? Maybe, maybe not. We don't know people. People aren't that predictable. They are complicated, you know? And just because people search something doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to act upon, you know? So it's it's a complicated situation. It's kind of a very intriguing kind of thing thought excise from a moral philosophy standpoint I, w I would assume just like you know because Sherlock kind of chooses freedom it's like people are allowed like people do terrible things they should be caught and they should suffer the consequences for what they do but the fact of the matter is they should still be allowed to make those mistakes that's just being people you know because he even brings up something I thought was kind of interesting that basically Sherlock lives in the past because that's what Sherlock does he when he his whole detective work is about catching the bad guy after the fact it's like what i want to do is obviously catching the bad guy before anything happens so obviously obviously you can also make comparisons to this with being like the whole minority report you know situation too of like saying people can be you know 
oh, this person uh, getting arrested before they even committed a crime. Obviously, this goes even a step further because it's not, oh, you're getting arrested. It's like you're being killed for a crime you haven't even committed yet. You know, that who knows if you're going to. It's not even like a 100% guarantee. It's a, there's a percent chance that you might do something. You know, so that's the whole thing. And obviously for Sherlock, you know, said a line I thought was kind of interesting where he was saying living in the past is justice. I guess what he meant by that is because by diving into the past, we're able to kind of figure out what went down and get justice for those who might not have gotten it before. You know, because obviously Odin's way of doing things is just straight up murder because it's not like you're getting justice for anybody because nothing's happened yet. You're killing people who, once again, might do something. Once again, not 100% a guarantee, you know? We have like, you know, Belle and Gregson and Joan on her way, but when they get there, their shots fire and it's like Sherlock put the gun down, but it's not Sherlock. Odin had shot in Sherlock. And they arrest him. And obviously you have Bell being like, you know, get the Coast Guard, whoever you can to look for, you know, Sherlock. I mean, he's one of our own. One of our own is in that water. And, you know, Gregson, you know, goes in after Odin saying like, oh, like the fact of the matter. Because that, that was his friend. It's like the fact of the matter is plus you're a terrible person. We know what you are up to. So basically we're going to do whatever we can to push towards you being taken down. We're going like first degree murder. And he's like, I was defending myself. It's like, no, Joan says that you lured him out there. And he's like, that's BS. She's lying. It's like, but basically you don't want to tell Gregson doesn't care. It's like this, my friend's life was taken because he was trying to stop you. And when we go to court, we're going to dismantle your business because everything that you've been hiding is there. No ones and zeros. We will find it. The fact of the matter is that's how we're going to go about this in court too. We're going to make it seem like you killed Sherlock to cover up the fact is that he wanted to expose your secrets. So now it's that whole complicated thing of like, <laughs> because Gregson, it's like, you know, Sherlock, he trusted me to do this and I'm going to do this. I'm going to get justice for my friend. It's like, I guess we do have something in common. We can both tell when we're looking at a murderer or something. And you can tell Odin's kind of sweating a little bit because it's like he didn't expect things to kind of turn out this way. And obviously you have like Joan kind of like stressed out about this whole thing. And Bell is like, just tell me like, was Sherlock, Sherlock, you know, was he going there to kill? Was this about revenge? It's like, let us know about this ahead of time. But Jones kind of like, I got to leave. But we see what was interesting was like, you knew it wasn't the case. We knew Sherlock wasn't dead. But the fact is there's blood at the scene. His arm is messed up. I guess that's where he got shot at. I guess like, I guess he's put himself in a position where it's like, if he got shot, it would be somewhere that wouldn't be fatal. Or maybe he arm got messed up falling off. On, into the water or maybe like the impact like broke his arm or something but we see him somewhere I mean I'm assuming it's somewhere out of the country so obviously next episode is the series finale a lot of stuff that needs to be brought up how is this whole Odin thing going to be taken care of which is so interesting because it seems like that's literally going to be the entire final episode but also the question then becomes like well does did I'm assuming Joan knew everything that Sherlock was playing well because she went to like you know Bell being like I think Sherlock, you know, she kind of hinted at that, like, oh, yeah, Sherlock's, I tried to stop him or whatever. So it's like, but now she's also playing like she didn't know what he was really up to, that this was revenge or whatever. But the question then becomes, well, maybe the whole thought process, well, I think they were in on this together. But I think it is that situation of, and it's something I brought up at the beginning of the season, when this is all said and done. Is there any coming back from this? Like, is Sherlock going to, like, to make this case stick, is Sherlock going to have to disappear? You know, or at the very least, be in a position where it's like Odin thinks he's going so that Sherlock can work behind the scenes to get this done. What about Watson? Is it going to be a thing of like, okay, you know, like I said, like, I get the feeling like Sherlock will be like in Europe and Watson will be back in New York because this is where she wants to be. This is where her family is. This is where her life was. And obviously, she uprooted her life for like a year to be with Sherlock, but I don't think, you know, Giving a chance to kind of, you know, it's like that's his partner, but he wants her to kind of potentially have her own life. She puts so much on hold for him, like the whole adoption and everything. I'm sure that's going to be an aspect they deal with. Like I say, it's so interesting because like you would expect this combined with what we'd probably get in the series finale to be. The, but like, I think that's going to be interesting to see what they do. Because like, I feel like this whole going after Odin thing is going to be the series finale. But 
what else along with it, especially with what they've set up. I think, you know, Sherlock's kind of playing this thing out potentially with Watson. But the thing is, with Sherlock, there's always more to it that I'm curious is there a lot more that he's holding on to that maybe he didn't tell Watson or maybe Watson knows the full plan. She did say that she tried to convince him not to go down his route, but who knows? I'm very interested to see ultimately where this all goes because maybe that's why she's so frustrated because she knows what the end game of this all is. I'm very interested to see how this all plays out, like what the series finale is going to look like, what's going to go down. I'm excited to find out how they end up wrapping up this series. But really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love, light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.